Paul Broder with another edition of the Broder Bulletin. Today we're going to be discussing a new law that's relevant to our low income older residents here in Melrose who own property. This law was proposed by my administration and unanimously supported by the Melrose City Council in 2021. It was then enacted by uh, up at the State House this past June, thanks to State Representative Lipper Garabedian and Senator Jason Lewis, and then signed into law by Governor Baker just last week. Uh, the bill, for those of you who like the details, is House Bill 3766. And the passing of this law has allowed the city of Melrose to offer a special new property tax exemption program for older adults, uh, exclusive to Melrose residents, 65 years of age and older. Now, even before the pandemic started, uh, we had heard a lot, uh, this great team, about uh, the cost of living and how seniors, uh, particularly folks with lower incomes on fixed incomes, were really facing significant challenges meeting their day-to-day -day needs. Uh, we certainly don't want folks to have to delay their retirement or make other uh, really difficult financial choices in order to stay in their homes that they've been in for such a long time. And the passage of this law and this new program represents my commitment to relieving our longest standing Melrose residents of some of these financial burdens. Now, throughout the show, we're going to be discussing how the program works and why it is extremely relevant to our property owners in Melrose, again, who are 65 years of age and older. Now, to better understand really how this law came to be, what the benefits of the program are, who is eligible, and most importantly, how you go about getting the benefit, we're going to talk with this really superstar panel of guests who have uh, very graciously agreed to join us today. First, we're going to hear from Caitlin Bergarabedian, our state rep, uh, who is going to tell us really about how this, how this all came about from a legislative perspective. Kate, thanks for joining us. Welcome back to MMTV. Thanks, Mayor Broder. It's nice to be here with you and good to be able to share such great news with the community. A real testament to the strong local state partnership we have here in Melrose. I remember when I was on city council, you were teeing up a package of supports and resources for our senior community. That was pre-COVID, as you note, uh, but this bill is ever more important given what we have been dealing with over these last couple of years. So as you mentioned, we have a bill that's proposed by you that the city council unanimously supported that you signed off on. And then I took it to the state house in Boston, filed it with the clerk's office. It gets a bill number and it gets assigned to a committee. At that point, we wait uh, for a committee hearing to happen. And in that time, I was pulling together all the information with you and your team to make sure to present to the chairs of the committee, the Joint Committee on Revenue, a really strong proposal for why they should recommend passing this bill. Was glad to do that both in written testimony and show up at the committee hearing to testify orally. Um, we got a favorable review and then it went down to the next committee and so forth and so on. And all along the way, it was me checking in with the committee staff and the chair of that relevant committee to say, really want to get this through. And I was able to also reference the work that I did for the town of Wakefield, which just uh, and when I came into the State House, had already passed a home rule petition like this one to st establish a similar program and was really thrilled in my first session to get that to the finish line and have it signed by Governor Baker. More than 100 senior households in Wakefield are now taking advantage of this really important um, home rule petition um, and making a real difference for their bottom line. So again, moved it through the process, got it over then once the House had engrossed it, it went to the Senate was in touch with Senator Lewis, his team, to say, can we get it through the Senate side? They did that really quickly and over to the governor's desk. So now it's the law, and I'm so excited to hear about how we're going to be implementing it in real time um, to support our seniors here in Melrose. Thanks, Kate. I know folks, like, it, it sometimes it's a little bit Byzantine how the, how the state house works, and folks should understand that with over 7,000 bills a year floating around that you really have to be dogged to make sure your bill gets from point A to point B, gets to the governor's desk. So thank you, thanks to you and Senator Lewis for, for your hard work. It's, it was our pleasure. We're glad to have been able to help. So Sarah, you're up next, and you have the, um, the responsibility of turning the program into um, a user-friendly, customer-friendly program here in Melrose. Uh, how are we going to go about this? Tell me how it all works. 
Sure, thank you, Mayor Broder. So folks receive the senior circuit breaker tax credit on their state income tax. They may be eligible to receive an additional uh, real estate tax relief, relief equal to one and a half times their circuit breaker credit. Um, for this current year, this would be um, up to a maximum exemption of $1,755. So it's a fairly, um, there's some fairly technical aspects to this, I know. Now you said may be eligible. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because this is not something that's open to every senior or every member of the community that's 65 or older. What other qualifications are available? Sure. So um, to receive, in order to qualify for this uh, circuit breaker exemption, um, a resident must have received the, circ the senior circuit breaker tax credit on their state income tax. They must own and occupy a home in Melrose as their main dwelling for the past 10 consecutive years. Their co-applicant or co-owner of the home must be at least 60 years old as of December 31st, 2021. They must have no other significant assets, such as a second home. And finally, they must apply for this exemption with the Melrose Board of Assessors between August 1st and September 30th of this year. So folks should understand this isn't the only time or the only way you'll be able to get this information. Super important that we're going to be supporting folks all the way through. Um, so, Stacy, tell me about you know you are you are our boots on the ground in terms of acting, uh, interacting with our older residents here in Melrose. Um, give me your thoughts on this and how um, how you think that uh, this might help folks. Thank you, Mayor. Um, it's always a good day when we can help our seniors uh, financially. So. Um, we're very, very pleased that this bill, this bill has passed. Um, we'll also support the assessor's office if they want an application. We can have it available at the Milano Center, and we can also help them uh, with any photocopying they need to firm up their uh, form. And Sarah, that's, uh, that, that's one avenue. Um, uh, we're going to try to reach people as many ways as possible. Right. Tell, me, so tell me about how the, how the website might work. Yep, so we will have um, copies available of the application at the Melrose Assessor's Office. This is on the first floor of City Hall, located at 562 Main Street. Um, we do also have the um, application available um, on our website at the um, Assessor's page. Uh, it's cityofmelrose.org forward slash assessor. And so as a general proposition, like what kinds of information um, are folks going to need to present in order to complete the application? Sure, so um, they need a copy of their 2021 state income tax return, which indicates their circuit breaker credit amount. Um, they also need a copy of their photo ID and a copy of any trust documents if their property is held in a trust. That work for you, Stacy? Mm -hmm. Works out great. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. So I, I have a little bit of a question. So the application is really the first part of the process. So I know you have to file between August 1st and September 30th. What happens next? So the Melrose uh, Board of Assessors will meet and review the applications, and then they're going to determine eligibility. Um, then any approved exemption is applied to the fiscal year 2023 tax bills, the actual tax bills. Those are the bills that are mailed in December, and they're due in February and May. The um, applicants will be able to see that exemption amount applied right to their, to their tax bill. Mm -hmm. Will they be notified if their application is approved ahead of the receiving their tax bill? Yes, so the Board of Assessors um, will notify the, the taxpayers of their decision. Um, it's usually within 10 days right after um, their decision. Great. They send a letter. And so how long, about how long do you think from the, you know, the board getting the application to making a decision? So the board's going to meet um, several times throughout um, August and September um, to review all the applications, um, and then they they will uh, notify within 10 days of their decisions. So you mentioned that folks um, are going to have to apply uh, every year. Mm -hmm. um, sounds like a little bit of a hassle. Why you know why is the program built that way? So um, each year they they have to um, apply for the the circuit breaker tax on their state income tax or sorry, for the credit on their, on their state income tax. Yep. And then they will, each year during the months of July and August, they're gonna submit an application to the Melrose Assessors 
um, for the tax exemption, for the property tax exemption. Um, so it's based on their circumstances every year, and so every year you kind of take right. a new snapshot circumstances of, what, can, of, yeah. of what's going on. Because they can change throughout throughout the year, so the Board of Assessors has to review um, each year mm -hmm. the application. Makes sense. Uh, Sarah, some of our older adults don't file taxes. Are they still eligible to receive the exemption? Um, so they possibly could be. Um, so that older adults who um, may not be uh, may not be required to file taxes due to income should always uh, contact the assessor's office to see if they may be eligible for um, this tax relief or other forms of tax relief. And can residents do, is, can, can residents go back to prior years to try to get the same kind of relief? Um, so unfortunately, the law does not allow the Board of Assessors to um, grant this exemption for. Okay, so no, no retroactivity, just the current fiscal year that you make the application for. Right. Okay, so community members are obviously going to have questions, and you know, we're excited to push this out, but um, it, it's not crystal clear sometimes. It's a new it's a new program. Um, how can folks get in contact with you to get their questions answered? Sure. So um, residents are um, feel free to contact um, myself and my fellow assessors, um, Tristan and Tina, um, at the Melrose Assessor's Office. It's 781-979-4104. Um, you can also um, check out our webpage. That's cityofmelrose.org forward slash assessor um, for uh, just any information on this exemption, we also have um, information about the other um, uh, property tax exemptions that are available for, um, for older adults as well there. Also, uh, feel free to call the Milano Center. Um, our telephone number is 781-662-6886. Like I say, there's, kind of, there's no wrong door, right, if you have questions. If you are more familiar with Stacy, reach out to the COA. If you want to go right to the right to the source, then you go to the board of assessors, uh, and and we'll, we will take care of you one way or another. That's one of the reasons why it's important to jump on this early, right? Is because it is a process. If you need to go track down a new piece of information or get some other piece of the application together, we want to give you as much time as possible to make sure you're you're kind of getting every getting everything you're entitled to. Absolutely. Um, Sarah and I are also going to be partnering up on public workshops, too, um, and we'll be pushing the circuit breaker tax relief because I'm sure there are folks out there that uh, may be eligible, might not be eligible for this year's match, mm -hmm. but next year if they apply for the circuit breaker, they'll be eligible for the following year's match. Mm -hmm. This is an unscripted comment, That's but okay. the House uh, <laughs> Economic Development Bill just passed yesterday and heading over to the Senate includes some proposals for permanent tax reforms that would include an increase in the state senior circuit um, mm -hmm. tax rate, so, or credit yeah. rather. Right. Yes, that's, sorry, so no, that's, the, that's the one, 1,755. Correct. That's the, that 1107 is last year's number, 1755 is this year's number. I also wanted to add that this, uh, the senior breaker, the senior circuit breaker tax um, exemption is also um, available in addition to any other um, exemptions that um, older adults are eligible for. So it's not standalone. Um, so yeah. So it can be it can be a little bit confusing, but it is good news, and that's what folks. So folks, um, Sarah in particular, I want to thank you for walking us through this program. That's a little bit that can be a little bit complicated. Uh, Kate, again for your hard work up on up on Beacon Hill, getting this through, and for the other work that you're doing on behalf of seniors. Um, we should point out to folks that you're the vice chair of the Joint Committee on. Elder Affairs. I don't know if we talked about that. So this is yep. not the only issue that you're working on, for sure, for for all the residents in Melrose and, and across the Commonwealth. Thanks, Paul. And Stacy, on a day to day basis, the work that you're doing, Thank um, you. you know, from pre COVID to COVID to now moving into post COVID, uh, it's been outstanding. I know it's very much valued by all the members of the of the community. Again, I want to thank you all for joining us. A shout out to Senator Lewis, who couldn't be with us today. Um, but we are, again, very appreciative for everyone's efforts to providing some help and some relief to some of our lower income older, older residents here in Melrose. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.